Uh, it's my pleasure to now introduce Mr. Occam Steiner. Uh, Occam has, since June this year, been serving as the head of the United Nations Development Program, and he's also the chair of the United Nations uh, uh, Development Group, which brings together the 32 UN agencies delivering together the Sustainable Development Goals. As the administrator of the UNDP, he oversees deployment of five billion per year. Uh, the UNDG, which includes the biggest UN agencies, UNICEF, World Food Program, UNHCR, and World Health Organization, overall delivers 25 billion per year. Occam has argued that the future of development will be defined through the relationship between people and economy, and the transition of a green economy is an imperative. As a former head of the United Nations Environment, Occam has had considerable success in adopting for the realignment of finance to environmental sustainability. Now, his and our collective challenge is to support the realignment of finance towards the sustainable development goals. Please welcome Mr. Occam Steiner to the stage. Thank you, John. Thanks so much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the warm welcome and for the introduction that John just made. Um, I want to begin by thanking him and SOCAP and many others who have sought to develop a conversation between that world that we often call public policy, the United Nations, that sphere of globalization in which I happen to be working right now, and your world, the world of opportunity, of entrepreneurship, of having the means to put your money where your mouth is, to put it simply. I stand here before you this morning, first of all, as somebody who um, a while back was born on a farm in Brazil. My parents were farmers, and over the course of my life, I found myself now leading the largest UN agency within the United Nations system, an organization that John just described in terms of financial turnover, but actually its most powerful foundation on which it can influence what happens next in our world is that we are present almost everywhere, in over 170 countries with people working on the front lines of the challenges of development, of understanding the risks locally, but also collectively. And I happen to now be in New York, heading this agency since three months, and as part of our Secretary General's initiative, also extremely interested in trying to address the future of finance and development. But before I do so, let me also emphasize that the focus of the presentation this morning was meant to be on these sustainable development goals. Many or most of you will have heard of them. You may know of its genesis and the link to finance and impact investing. But let me also say, and some of you will be familiar with Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and the answer to the question about life, the universe, and everything was so simple, 42. I want to emphasize the SDGs are not attempting to be the answer. The Sustainable Development Goals, as they have evolved and were then agreed by every nation on this planet, was first of all a common framework with which to recognize the challenges that lie before us. Secondly, they are also a declaration of interdependence, first of all, of issues. We know from our 20th century history that economic development that ignores social dimensions, inequality, alienation, marginalization, sooner or later runs into crisis, just like ignoring our planet, the environment, sustainability, can ultimately destroy economies and societies. So that linkage between the economic, the social, and the environmental is central to an integrated approach. And it is a declaration of interdependence amongst us as peoples. At the beginning of the 21st century, with 7 billion people on this planet, soon 8, 9, and 10 billion people, decisions taken in a city like San Francisco can influence the lives of people literally thousands of miles away and vice versa. So this group of goals is not the answer, but it provides us with a framework with which to look, first of all, at a simple fact. Life is complex at the beginning of the 21st century. Let's not pretend otherwise. But to argue that everything is connected to everything else and therefore nothing can be done is also a very paralyzing feature. So the power, I believe, of the Sustainable Development Goals that we now see unfolding across the world 
is that it tries to accept complexity, but not let us be paralyzed by it. It provides us with a common framework, with a common language. It also gives us a way in which to understand how we can achieve win-win outcomes rather than trade-offs and win-lose outcomes, whether across the social, the economic, the environmental, or indeed between poorer nations or richer nations. The opportunity it speaks to and why I am here with you this morning is that financing is critical, it is central. And it is also recognition that governments and we in the United Nations system have had to come to terms with that public finance, governments as investors, are just a small share of our economies. To try to address the great challenges of the 21st century that we need to address together, collectively, requires us to bring the three quarters or four fifths of economic activity in alignment with these objectives. The Sustainable Development Goals are an expression of a common and shared strategy. And remarkably, it is not only resonating with governments across the world, and whether they are developing or developed countries, industrialized or poor island nations, but what I have been most astonished about is how people in the private sector world, in the investment world, are beginning to look at these Sustainable Development Goals as a real opportunity. We have extraordinary human ingenuity at our disposal. Never in the history of humanity have we lived in such extraordinarily powerful times in terms of possibility. Science, technology, knowledge, education, just to mention a few, are at our disposal as never before. Wealth and money has reached unprecedented levels in terms of the wealth that is at our disposal. But the extraordinary thing is that we live in a world where many people are looking to invest their money and can't find the right place to do it in. And yet much of the world is actually looking for money to invest in solving problems, problems for ourselves, but also for the common good of humanity. I know that this is part of the reason why you are here together. And therefore, let me speak for a moment to this idea of why a United Nations family and the family of impact investors should be talking to one another. We work at the front line of understanding the risks to the future of humanity. We intervene, unfortunately, very often as a crisis response, as you very often can watch on television sets when health crises break out, conflicts, natural disasters, civil wars. But under the leadership of our new Secretary General, prevention has taken a far greater place in the work of the UN and in terms of how we would like to work. The SDGs are our opportunity to start investing together in different futures. And that requires us to come together. What we need, however, for that to happen is to have good public policy. This is one of the core tasks of the United Nations family, whether across health, international aviation, the universal postal system, whether it is in the International Labour Organization or indeed in the World Trade Organization. The extraordinary thing about the United Nations family of specialized agencies is that they cover virtually every aspect of what allows us to trade with one another, communicate with one another, invest in one another. And that is part of the proposition of these Sustainable Development Goals. How can we invest in one another's common future? You represent a part of the world that has the means and the resources to actually bring the finance to the kinds of agendas that we know we cannot address in isolation from one another. Let me just give you a couple of examples to illustrate that this is not just abstract thinking. It is not just prose and rhetoric. It is, in fact, a very real investment proposition. Public policy often is viewed as big government and more government. But let us also be frank. That discussion of the 80s and 90s that the less government, the better, the more market, um, the better, is too simplistic an answer. Public policy is, in the first instance, an expression of our common interest. It is how we would like to have our economies and societies function. And we make different choices in different communities and nations. But without public policy, without a regulatory environment, we know that there would be too many failures. In the United Nations, what we try to do is to bring the best of science and of political analysis and economic analysis and point out to leaders across the world where the greatest risks for the future lie. Health crisis. You have seen just in the last few years how close we came to sometimes almost having to shut down our global economy because of the outbreak of infectious diseases. We spent the last 25 years trying to bring to the attention of the world the threat of carbon dioxide, something that most of us would have learned about in school and then forgotten about it. It is transforming everything on this planet. And we have helped by bringing nations together every year 
in these painfully slow processes of agreeing on what to do to act collectively because climate change is another illustration that shows why one country acting to solve a problem has no chance of succeeding if others do not join. On the back of that, and this is part of the DNA of the SDGs, extraordinary markets and opportunities have opened up. The renewable energy revolution that, you know, in the state of California has one of its homes is, however, a part of this effort of bringing the global community of nations together to say we have to transition to a low carbon economy. Many of you are already investors in the sectors of energy, of transport, of cities and urban infrastructure, or indeed of agriculture. And on the back of this common agenda that unites us and will hopefully allow us to look at global market spaces and places as acting in unison, unbelievable opportunities for investment are opening up. But our financial system is not aligned with addressing these. In fact, much of our money is invested in maintaining a 20th century economy rather than facing the challenges of the 21st century. Take, for example, an issue such as food waste. We know that we have to increase agricultural production or at least food production in the coming years significantly if we are going to feed another two to three billion people on this planet. And yet our agricultural production system today is already producing food in such a way that we are destroying land on which we grow food. We have a net loss of arable land. Add to that the fact that more than 35% of all food produced every year on this planet is never consumed because it is lost between farm and market or it is just thrown away. Sell-by dates, the luxury of buying cheap food, it rots in the fridges, it gets thrown away, cafeterias, restaurants. The waste of food is unbelievable. Our opportunity is to work with you to look at ways in which we can address this, turn problems into opportunities and address the space for solutions in a way that we can scale up. In our work every day in the United Nations, we can try to bring pilot projects to demonstrate possible solutions. We cannot, and we are not in a position to take them to scale. Countries are not in a position to take them to scale. They need you, particularly as impact investors, to be the pioneers, the entrepreneurial leaders, the catalysts that can create confidence and trust in an economy that rather than adding to our problems, begins to make investment a part of the solution. My hope is that the Sustainable Development Goals, as you can use them in your everyday decision-making and thinking, will increasingly become a concept and a language that unites us. Much of the economic paradigm of the last 50 to 100 years was premised that somehow our individual well-being is premised on outcompeting the other. Now, competition is good. Many of you in this room wouldn't be sitting here if you hadn't been a very good competitor in what you do. But as a human family, at the beginning of the 21st century, let us be honest, we cannot simply premise our common future on outcompeting one another. In a world with 10 billion people, where pollution, where the risk of disease, of economic collapse, or of social upheaval because of inequality and poverty threatens the very fabric of our global economy that we so often invoke, is a real challenge. My plea, my invitation to you is to engage with us in the United Nations. We are part of that ecosystem in which you operate. We have a particular role that we can bring to this as we recognize increasingly that you have a unique role to help us awaken a financial system, a financial market, a universe of investors that accepts that you can, as you have so often discussed in SOCAP meetings, bring meaning to money and bring money to meaningful solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, the 21st century could be the greatest century in human history. It could also be the worst. Those were the words of Jim Martin, whose school I had the privilege to lead at the University of Oxford for the past year, a school focused on the great challenges of the 21st century. Now, one of the most manageable challenges that we have is to actually bring all that money, all that wealth, all that capital that is looking for good and valuable and also profitable things to do in alignment where humanity must find new ways of doing business. I invite you to join us on that journey. I thank you for the time that you have given me here this morning. And above all, I thank you for the interest that you have already shown by being here and by doing what you do to be part of that community and that voice across the world. Thank you very much.